This story is going to involve uh, Angelo Ruggiero and John Gotti. They grew up together. They were childhood friends. Angelo Ruggiero got cancer towards the end, and he was very sick. John just had a thing that he didn't want to bother with him, and he was just really, really mad at him. So he told me one day, I think I'm going to take Angelo out. I'm going to kill him. Bro, he's dying of cancer. He's your childhood friend. It's not going to look good to people. Why would you do that? Why don't you just, I know you, you got him up to here, but uh, I think it's just relax, bro. Let him just die. And basically, that's what he did. We didn't take him out. He was dying and eventually died of cancer. And uh, there was going to be a funeral. So I went to him, what day are we going to go? I don't think I'm going to go. John, there'll be a ton of people there because they know you. he's your childhood friend. They're out of respect of you. There's going to be a ton of people there. And then we're not going to go. It just don't look right, bro. It don't look right. Let's go there. Let's go to the funeral. Get it over. Pay your respects to the family. His whole family knows you and your family. Come on, let's do this. Okay. So we go to the funeral. Now, I left with Big Louie, my brother-in-law, Eddie, um, I think Huck, myself. We all got in the car, and we met him at the funeral park. Came in, place was packed, just like I thought people from different families were there to pay their respects, came over to John. I was sitting there and uh, my brother-in-law got a call or something and he went in the office in the funeral bar. He came back out, he says, Sammy, your son got hit by a car. Call your sister on the phone. She's there hysterical. Is he alive? I don't even know. Your sister's hysterical. I went in there and I called. She was on the phone. Oh my God. He got hit by a car on a mini bike and with some girl in there. He had another a girl on the mini bike with him. Yeah. Oh my God. And she's crying. All right, Franny, calm down. Is he dead? Oh my God. And she hangs up on me. I said, Oh my God. My son is dead. I go back over to John. And I told John, what happened? His son was killed on a mini bike as well in a car accident. So he says, guy, go take the guys and go home. Go, go. All right. So we get in the car and we're speeding down the highway to get back to the neighborhood. And we get on the a phone again. I think I was with Louis Sassenti because he had one of those portable bullshit phones. It was like a big box. It wasn't like the phones of today. They said me, he's alive. He's in a Staten Island hospital. He's fucked up. And go to the Staten Island hospital. On the way to the Staten Island hospital, I make another call. I had a doctor in New York hospital a good friend of mine, heavyweight doctor. And I called him and talked to him and said, listen, my son just got hit by a car. He's in the Staten Island Hospital. Could you get him in New York Hospital? I'll, I'll make all the arrangements, Sammy. I mean, I'll get him there right away. Give me the information and uh, I'll have an ambulance go there, pick him up, 
and bring them to New York Hospital. But somebody's got to be there, you, your wife, or somebody to sign a release. Okay. So I give the phone to my brother-in-law. Now he's on the phone talking to my sister and my wife to go sign a release and stuff. We get there and uh, they're already moving him, putting him in an ambulance to go to New York Hospital. They take him to New York Hospital and we drive down there. Louis Sassetti drives me down. I tell Eddie, go by my sister, calm her the fuck down. I tell Louis, I'll talk to you later. Say, you want me to come? No, you don't, there's, you don't have to come. I'll, Louis Sassetti will take me there and uh, I'll, I'll see what's going on. And Louis Sassetti takes me down to New York Hospital. I go in there, he's banged up. His leg is broken, a couple of ribs, and he's, they're not even sure of some of the injuries he might have, and so on and so forth. So I'm there with him, and now the hospital is closing, everything is closing up, and there's no more visitors, there's no more nothing. The doctor comes over to me and says, he came down, he wasn't even on duty, he came down talk to the doctors and nurses and stuff. And I was able to stay beyond the time. Then he says, Sammy, there's nothing you could do. You know, you can go, come back tomorrow. Don't worry about visiting hours. I'm really going to leave strict instructions you want to come back in. So I said, all right. And I'm going to go. So I go downstairs, kiss my son goodbye. And he's nervous. He's a kid. He's nervous, he's a little scared, and he's beat up. So I get downstairs where the parking lot is to get the car, and it's just bothering the shit out of me. I said, Louie, go home, bring some clothes with me tomorrow, bring some clothes down here for me, and uh, I'm going to stay over. How could you stay up? Listen to what I'm telling you. Go home, get up in the morning, get some clothes for me, and I'll be here. I'm going to stay here. What am I? He's nervous. He's scared. I'm going to stay. So I go back in, and God comes over to me. So he says, it's closed. Visiting I was closed. I said, I know, I know. But I'm going to go upstairs and stay with my son. People come over. Well, they tell the God, Leave him alone. We know who he is. Leave him alone. And uh, I go up there. They get me uh, a chair that, you know, it folds out with the legs up so I could sit in this chair with him all night and I could fall asleep in the chair. And I decide that's exactly what I'm going to do. I go over and I hug him. I kiss him. I take care of him a little bit. I'm broken hearted. The next day, I took a, a shower in the, in the hospital, and uh, Louis brought my clothes. And visiting hour came. John Gotti came up with about four guys. I mean, the hospital was in, they couldn't even believe it. John Gotti coming in, Sammy the Bull is here, it's his son. It was like, to them it must have been, I don't know, a big thing. A few main guys came up in the elevator. John said, what are these guys doing here? They're visiting like you are. John Gotti gave my son a, just a, he hollered at him. And I guess out of frustration, he lost his son, died the same way. So I, it was good. He gave him a little tongue lashing and it was the right thing to do. That was it. John left. I left that night. He got a lot better. He wasn't even able to urinate. They had tubes in it and to drain him. And they took the tubes out during the day and everything looked better. That doctor friend of mine came and he said, Sammy, there's really nothing you could do. The kid's all right. He's busted up his leg. A few things. He says, all the x-rays, everything turned out good. 
You can go home tonight. He'll be all right now. He's smiling. He's looking a little bit better. Don't worry about it. And you leave your number. If anything, I'll give you a call. I'll have them give you a call right away. So we did all of that. Now, the point is that what John wanted to do with Angelo and I had stopped him from doing as far as killing him and as far as not going to the wake. Louis Sassenti, I believe it was, lived three doors away from the person who crashed into my son. And actually, he didn't crash into my son. My son actually crashed into him with a mini bike and a little kid on the bike. So Louis Sassenti told me, he says, Sammy, the guy is horrified. About what? Well, the guy who had the accident with John Gotti's kid, he disappeared, he was killed. The, the guy is terrified. It was a car accident, bro, and my son actually crashed into him. And uh, I said, how's the little girl who was behind him? No, she's all right. She, she hit him, she flipped over him and landed on the hood of the car, but she's all right. I spoke to her parents as well. And this guy's afraid, afraid of getting killed? Yeah. Now take me to his house. And that's what he did. I went to the guy's house and I said, listen, bro, it was a car accident. I'm not a fucking animal. You're not going to get killed. Nothing's going to happen to you. It was an accident. It was actually my son's fault. It was a mini bike that I had on the farm. I put it in a garage. Kids would be kids. He took the thing and drove it and thank God there was another little girl on the back that she, I heard she didn't get hurt, but I'm going to her house next. So please don't worry about it. It's an accident. There's be no lawyers, no, they, I'm not even going to do anything about it. Uh, you know, if you could call, no, I got insurance, I'm not worried about none of that. Okay, and then don't worry about nothing. Nothing's going to happen to you. So I left. And then I went over the house where the little girl lived. I rang their bell. They came to the door and I says, how's that kid? Well, she's okay. She's got, you know, some black and blues and this and that. And I said, listen, I got friends who are heavyweight doctors in Staten Island Hospital, New York Hospital. If anything is wrong with the kid, fuck insurances and everything. Don't worry about money. Let's take her in. I want to make sure she's okay. No, no, she's okay. This beautiful little kid come running out. Gorgeous little kid. I pinched her on the cheek. She was fine. Her lip was swollen. She had a few black and blues on her body. I didn't see where they were. But uh, I told them, here's my number, my house. My wife's name is Deborah. If there's anything, give her a call. Don't worry about bills, doctor bills or anything. Take care of it. Don't let it go. Don't let it slide. I apologize that she was on the bike with my son, but I was at a funeral when this thing happened. I, I, didn't, I, I, I don't let the kid drive the bike. He took it on his own. No, no, we know kids. And boom. So everything went by with that. If you like the story, press like. Press subscribe. It'll help us get to a certain point which opens some doors. There's so much more to tell. I'm working on it, my podcast. Some of the stories I stay away, they're so heavy, but they belong to the podcast end of it. And uh, it's going to be coming out soon. In the beginning of February, we think, we hope. Adios, motherfucker.